I know. I know they set us up good so far. Since we examined Tuck shirt, what's yours? I think we got Gruff on here. And honestly, I haven't taken too much of a look at it other than when it's on my chest. So <laughs> it looks cool, though. More seriously, I, I mentioned to, to Coach that you seem to be obviously more of a leader, to, more of a take charge guy this year. A year ago, you were battling for a, the starting position. Have you felt that? Have you taken a new responsibility to be a, a bigger presence and maybe lift this team on your shoulders? Yeah, you know, uh, when you talk about leadership, it's something that is, you know, different in different situations. You know, I, like like you said, last year I was competing for a job, so um, it wasn't 100 percent, you know, my team, as people say, as in when you're a quarterback, people say, OK, it's your team, you know. But, um, you know, I always felt like I've been a leader my whole life, you know, on different teams that I'm on. And sometimes that looks different, you know. Um, so this year, obviously, you know, um, going into camp as as the starting quarterback still obviously have a lot to prove and and I want to compete every single day as if you know it's not my job you know and so um but yeah that leadership part is it's different um every year and this year you know obviously we've had a whole summer a whole winter um you know that we've gone through where those things have been in place so um but yeah it feels good it feels good to be out there Peyton, so you guys have Jaden coming back, obviously, with that lead guy. But what have you seen from that wide receiver room coming into camp so far? Uh, I see a lot of guys that like to work hard, which is a great thing. I see a lot of speed. Um, I see a lot of good hands, good body control. You know, I think we got a really good group. And um, we got some good leadership in that group from different guys. And obviously, Jaden is uh, the key uh, leader and returner of that group. But I think we got a couple young guys that are going to be really good. I think Keon Coleman's going to be a stud. I think Jeremy Bernard has a chance to be a really good player. Uh, Cade McDonald is a guy that nobody talks about who, you know, I've played a lot of football with who's a really good player. Um, and I think we got some young guys that are, that are going to have a chance to be really good. And obviously, you know, obviously Jaden, you guys know about him, so I don't have to talk much about him. I have uh, two questions. Or, Stephen, were you supposed to go? No, why not? Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> uh, first one, so Jeff mentioned that he listened to Metallica on the way in. Darius listened to like a British artist. Jeff Petrowski? Yes. Okay. Uh, I, I'm, not, I'm not surprised by that. <laughs> I, I don't Darius think any... listening to some British guy also doesn't surprise me. I don't even know what that is. Did you listen to anything particular on the way in? Oh, man, what was I listening to this morning? I listened to a new song somebody sent me yesterday, and I can't remember who it's by. It's by someone I've never even heard before, but it's some... Um, so it's it's upbeat, you know. Okay. Um, but no, nothing specific on my way in. I got about a ten minute ride in, so I, I get a couple songs in. But then they they were playing music out. They had a big speaker out in front of the locker room this morning at six in the morning. So I was excited to see that. That was that was good stuff. Yeah. Well, a little bit more uh, serious, I guess. But last year, first day of fall camp versus the vibe and just of this year's first day of fall camp. How different was it? A lot of the guys have been mentioning that it is different. Yeah, absolutely. It is different. Um, you know, our goals haven't changed, but our expectation has. You know, there's a set expectation this year. You know, we knew we had a good team last year. We did. We really did. And then we went out and, and proved that we had a good team. And this year we feel like we have a very good team again. And now it's, okay, we're taking the next step. We're taking the next step with our intensity, with our attention to detail, with our consistency. And then we talked yesterday, Coach Tuck talked to the team yesterday about stacking days. And so we, I thought we laid a good foundation today. I thought we had a really good day. And now it's, okay, now we got to have two good days, now three good days, and we're not taking steps back, you know. And so that's going to, as camp goes on, guys get tired and guys get a little knick-knack injuries. And it's, you know, it's about showing up every day and saying, hey, nobody cares if we have a little injury. Nobody cares if it's hot out, you know. The, everybody's dealing with that stuff. And so what are we going to do to excel and increase our intensity and increase our attention to detail every day, which... You know, I think we're going to do that. But going to your question, you know, yeah, there is a different feeling today. And it, I, it felt great out there today. And I'm excited about where we're going. Uh, Peyton, I want, is there a sense, you know, amongst you and the receivers, when you look at it, like that's sort of where you guys' experience is offensively, is in the passing game. Yep. Uh, I know you guys want to be balanced, and you were balanced last year. But is there a sense among you guys that maybe the passing game was sort of 
you know, be in the driver's seat, carry the banner a little bit this year versus where Kenneth Walker was kind of that last year and you guys were maybe a little more complimentary? Is that that makes sense at all where the, the passing game will sort of be in the driver's seat this year versus it was, a, you know, reversed a year ago? Is, does, is there a sense of that? Yeah, I know what you're saying. Um, I, I honestly don't even know what we were, our official percentages were last year, but I would assume we were pretty close to 50-50. Um, but yeah, you know, last year, obviously, you had the best running back in the country, and they have to respect that. You know, they have to put extra guys in the box and stuff like that, which we would play off that. And then our play action game uh, is, a, is a good amount of our offense. And so obviously, we're still going to run the ball, and we're still going to look to be balanced. But like you said, we have experience uh, between uh, Jaden and myself, you know, having a year under our belt together. Uh, Keon Coleman got some snaps last year, but he, you know, has increased that, and we've gotten some good chemistry going through the offseason. So you know, you always, want to, you always want to start up front. It always starts up front, and, and then that starts with the run game. But, you know, as a balanced offense, you, you play off both of them. And so one game you may come out there and just start slinging it, and then your run game, that opens up your run game. Other, other games you come out there and you just pound the rock, opens up your play action, makes more guys commit to the box, and then you start spitting it out there. So it kind of depends on who you're playing, honestly, and what kind of defense you're playing and maybe what the conditions are, all types of stuff. So... Um, but yeah, we're going to be a balanced offense. We're going to, you know, I'm excited to throw it. And then, you know, I'm excited to watch our backs and our offensive line play as well. Peyton Mel was in here earlier and he said that he showed you guys that you're projected to finish fourth in the Big Ten East. Yep. So what did, how'd you guys react to that? And do you explain maybe why he wanted to share that with you? Yeah, you know, we, uh, I, I saw that before our team meeting. And then Coach, Coach Tuck brought it up that, you know, that's where we're projected to finish um, a year ago. I don't know who it was, but somebody projected us to be one of the five worst teams in the country. So that uh, that obviously panned out really well. Um, that was that was correct. But um, you know, it's all it's all talk preseason. You know, people are all over the place. I've seen teams my whole life who are consistently ranked in the top ten and then consistently finish the season unranked. So um, people say, oh, you know, you you love to be the underdog. This isn't that, and that's all that's all fun and good. But you know. At some point, you want to get to the point where it's, no, we, we are projected up here every year. And so that's what we're trying to get to, you know. But we do have a chip on our shoulder. We have something to prove. And we feel that every, every, every year. It's Michigan State. You know, you don't, we don't get a ton of respect. That's just how it is. That's how it's been. And so we got a chip on our shoulder, and we're excited to go out there and, uh, and show the country what we got. A year ago, there were a lot of question marks about this team, at least from the outside, when you, when you – uh, you go into it this year, and you've already gone through one year where you're bringing new guys in who've had experience. Are, are you seeing and sensing a difference maybe with how the staff and how everybody, even the players, are embracing guys and see what new guys can add to a program? You're talking in terms of like transfers yeah, and stuff? Yeah, in terms of the transfer guys in particular. Yeah, obviously, you know, it's a part of the game now, the portal. There's not many teams across the country that aren't bringing guys in or having guys leave. And so um, we got some new guys this year, and then honestly, most of the guys, it doesn't even feel like they're new anymore because they got here in the winter. So it's like, it's like oh, I forgot you even weren't here last year. You know some of the guys, and so uh, we have a, we have a few guys that have just been added in the summer. So they haven't they didn't get spring ball in, but um, you know it's it's good stuff. It brings competition out. We've talked about that before, and then uh, you know the best players are going to play. It doesn't matter if you're a freshman, transfer. You've been here for six years. It doesn't matter. So. Um, we're all together. You know, we don't see guys as transfers and non transfers. It's are you with us or you're not? And so are you are you bought into the culture or are you not? It doesn't matter if you're a transfer, or freshman, it doesn't matter who you are. And so it's it's one of those two. As a follow to that, did the success that you guys had last year maybe help ease that transition and have that mindset with it? Transfers in particular. Um yeah. I, I you know, I think you see that, you know, the culture that Coach Tuck has uh, put in place and that we have tried to build. Um, you know, last year we, we won a good amount of games by doing that. And so, and we felt like we could have won more. And, um, you know, so going into this year, we're, we're sticking to our plan and we're, we, we've revised the plan and we're, and we're doing more things that are going to help us. And so, you know, we're excited about what we got in place. Hey, Peyton, this spring, back on your right. This spring, obviously, you're talking about you being the only guy who's played in the game at quarterback. Yep. You said part of your role you felt was to help bring those guys along. I was just wondering what you've seen, what you saw during the spring and what you've seen this summer as they, you know, somebody's got to be next man up, you know, that, yep. obviously. 
Yeah, you know, I, th I think we got some good quarterbacks. Um, you know, I think Noah Kim has has really played well all in the spring, and you know, it's been fun playing with him in the in the summer, and you know, getting workouts in and everything. Um, and then after that, we'll see who falls after that. I don't I don't think we have a set depth chart yet. Uh, that'd be a better question for Coach Johnson than me, but. Um, I think we got good quarterbacks and we got good guys. And I think that's more important than anything is in a quarterback room, how, are you, how do you guys mesh? Because most places, it's only one guy can play at a time. You know, I, I know that. You don't really send out two quarterbacks for one play. So at, at some point, there's, good, there's only one guy out there. So um, I think we got a group of, of good people and, and guys that I think know, or I know they know what they're doing. So they're, they're good mentally and then you help each other through practice and then when the game comes, you help each other with that too. So, um, you know, I think we got a good group and I'm excited about uh, what we got going in the future. Uh, Peyton, Coach Johnson in the past has said the tight end is the MVP of his scheme and the first two years, you know, it's been a little bit different. Last year, Connor plays well, but he's kind of a, a one of one type of guy. Yeah. Uh, with the guys you have now in this room, what do, you, what do you see from them as a group and just what are you sort of excited about maybe what that position could evolve into with a, a full complement of sort of some traditional type of tight ends? Yeah, extremely excited about our tight ends. I think we have a very deep tight end room and some guys that can really go out and make some plays between <clears throat> Tyler Hunt, Malik Carr, and then DJ Barker, you know, that's a really good three, really good three. So um, those guys are going to make plays and you're going to see them all over the field, you know, and they, all three of those guys can do anything you want him to do. <clears throat> Tyler Hunt has put on like 20, 30 pounds. So he's, you know, invested into what he's doing and, you know, he's going to be able to block guys that are, you know, the 265 pound DNs, you know, stuff like that. And, you know, Malik is a huge guy. Uh, DJ is a bigger guy as well. And they all can run and they all have great hands. So um, there's really not many weak spots between the three of them combined. So I'm confident in all three of them out there, and they're all three going to see the field, I'm sure. And so, uh, you know, I'm excited about that position for sure. Peyton, uh, Coach Tucker said last week in Indy and again emphatically today that we didn't do anything last year. I'm sure he's driving that point home to you guys more than us. How much has that been prevalent in, in this summer and preseason? I mean, I don't know how accurate it is. You were 11 and 2 and won a bowl game. But how much is that kind of the, the theme this year with, with you guys? Yeah, you know, 11 and 2, uh, for many people on the outside, they think that's a good year. Um, but for us, and the standard we want to hold ourselves to, and where we want to get as a program, that's not good enough. Um, like we've talked about, our goal is to win every game on our schedule, and then get to Indianapolis, win that, and then play for a national championship. And um, that's our goal. And that's Coach Tucker's vision, which is our vision as well. And so um, that's our mindset going into this year. And like you said, you know, last year doesn't have anything to do with this year. You know, you got experience, you got guys that played, and it's good to have that experience, but you're not bringing any wins with you to 2022. You're not reaching back and saying, all right, we can take this one and this one. Okay, we're starting 2-0. and No, you're starting 0-0. Zero and, zero. and you got a different team, a new team, and you got to go prove yourself as that – new team and that's what we're going to do this year and uh you know like, like i said we're starting zero and zero so it's a new new season new team peyton i'm uh i'm sure that uh there were times last season when you were in the offense and you kind of look behind you and go hey we got number nine we're good talk a little bit about your mindset now and maybe how it's changed since you don't know that you have that kind of back behind you and then how you handle that as far as you run in the offense yeah you know this whole offseason I've been focused on making myself as good of a player as I can be you know and diving into our pass game and um, not even as much our pass game but just defense you know and learning how our pass game is gonna affect the defense you know if this guy runs a drag, what's he gonna do? If this guy goes out, what's he, what's he gonna do? You know, and all that stuff. And then really being able to think fast on the, so, you, cause anybody can draw it up on a board, you know, or not anybody, but you know, guys can draw it up on a board and say, okay, this, this, and this, but until you get out there on the field and you know the split second is, okay, he's gonna do this, this, and this. And then, you know, you go from there and then you can be efficient from there. And I think that's huge is, is quarterback efficiency and, you know, completion percentage and getting the ball out on time. You know, the best quarterbacks are the guys that do those things and then protecting the ball, you know, and ultimately that ends up 
getting you to score points. And so, um, you know, my mindset this year is to do those things, you know, be efficient and get the ball to our playmakers and score, score a lot of points. You know, that's the goal. Obviously, last year we were all pretty surprised when we saw Ken do what he was able to do against Northwestern in that first game. Today, Mel mentioned that Jarek Broussard has burst through traffic. When you look at him, I mean, you can't compare Ken, we talked about that too, but like, can you give a similar, like, let us in a little bit on like his burst through traffic and what that sort of looks like? Yeah, it's weird for me because I haven't really watched Jarek much because, you know, throughout the whole summer, we're, we're you know, we're doing our, our football stuff and you know, the player led stuff and it's, you got no pads on. So it's like, you know, it's tough to tell, but <clears throat> you know, and then today I haven't watched the film yet for practice. So when I was handed it off to him, I'm not watching either cause I'm carrying out my fake and doing all that business. So, um, it'll be interesting to see him once, you know, camp really gets going once we get a couple scrimmages in, but you know, I, he's got the tools, he's quick. He does have burst through speed. Um, you know, I think he has good vision, uh, in the backfield and he's got good hands. So, I think we're going to be able to do a lot with him, and it'll be interesting to see, you know, what kind of player he can be here. Because obviously we know what Ken was and everything, and you you saw Ken last year during summer workouts, and you knew this guy's going to be a stud. So, um, but it'll be it'll be fun to watch our backs develop here and and, and see what we got. A couple more. Then. Yeah, play action was a big component, obviously, of the offense last year. I mean, with, with Kenneth gone, how does that change? I mean, even trying to find the guy that kind of makes that makes that go in the sense of uh, just defenses honoring that player and also just the rhythm of going through the actual mechanism of play action with, with that specific running back. Yeah, you know, in terms of like the actual rhythm, like you talked about, that's, that's pretty easy. You know, you rep that every day, just exchanges between the quarterbacks and running backs and stuff like that. So um, that won't be an issue. But then just the play action, you know, in order to have a play action game, you got to have a run game. And so that comes down to obviously our running back helps out a lot. But when our offensive line plays well and we're able to get creases and, you know, gain yards running the ball, that's when you develop play action. It's tough to be a play action team when you're not able to run the ball because nobody cares if you're not able to run the ball. So um, that's what it comes down to. And I have, I have confidence that we'll be able to run the ball this year 100%. I think we got good offensive line play and I think we got good running backs. So um, hopefully, you know. It doesn't change much, you know. That actually, where, where I was going to ask you next about the offensive line. I mean, there's a, obviously you lost a lot of veteran experience in front of you. It, first of all, what have you seen from those younger guys? And do you feel like as a as a quarterback and a leader that you've had to take a little bit more of a vocal, maybe uh, task with them and kind of kind of get guys in the right spot? Yeah, you know, for sure. I, I think those guys do understand how important they are and, you know, how vital they are to not only our offensive success, but our whole team's success. And so they've taken that upon themselves, and I think they've really worked hard this offseason, uh, both physically and mentally, understanding what, what works, what doesn't, and, you know, different looks that we saw last year. You know, Nick Samak at center is a guy who's played a lot of football here. J.D. Duplain obviously has played a lot. Jared Horst has a season under his belt. Uh, and then Spencer Brown got a start last year in the Peach Bowl, and he played well. So... Um, and then Matt Carrick as well. You know, he's coming off injury, but he's played a lot of football. So those five, and then Brian Green as well, transfer, he's played a lot of football. So those guys have a lot of experience outside of maybe Spencer, but Spencer played still a decent amount. But I think those guys understand that as an offense, if they play well, we're going to play well. And so um, I'm excited to watch them develop. And I think we're off to a good start, a really good start. I think those five are really going to gel, five, six, seven. Whoever is really getting in the mix are going to gel really well. And so um, it'll be fun to see how it develops. In terms of young guys, you know, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know who our young guys are going to be yet, to be honest with you. Uh, we had so many injuries in the spring that it was tough to even see who the heck we had. And so, um, and then we had some guys on the scout team last year that I obviously didn't really see play at all. So it'll be interesting to see who, who emerges in that second group and who will have a chance to get some reps this year. And, you know, I'm excited to see how that unfolds. And yeah, you can see that. You can see that in practice, too, because uh, in the trenches, we talk a ton about staying up and staying on your feet. You know, if you're pile driving guys and everything, that's how injuries happen. And so you can see who has good body control and who's athletic when you can stay off the ground, you know. And so 
you can see that stuff in practice too. You don't have to be burying guys to see, okay, he's a good player and he's not, you know. So, but yeah, it'll, it'll be fun to see how that develops. Thank you guys. Have a good one.